Welcome everybody out to uh, Gaines Avenue, Church of Christ, where we meet 411, at 411 Gaines Avenue. We thank you all for coming. We want to um, thank the ones that's viewing online and the ones in person. Would you all go with me to a, with a word of prayer? Father God, we come to you in a moment of prayer. We're asking you to... Uh, be with us as we go into worship service. We thank you for allowing us to be here. We thank you for allowing us to see the day that we've never seen before and we'll never see again. We ask you to be with the ones that's in route here. Be with the ones that's online and the ones that couldn't make it. And we ask that you just allow them to make it in the next point of time. We ask you to continue to be with us, continue to bless us, and bless our family. So in Jesus Christ's name we pray. Amen. Amen. Good morning. Our first celestial will be in our White Hand Books, Canon number 38. The Lord keeps blessing me. It's Canon number 38 in the White Hand Books. The Lord keeps blessing me. May I let's sing. The Lord keep blessing me over and over and over and over and over again. The Lord keep blessing me over and over and over and over and over again. And it gets sweeter and sweeter as the years go by. Oh, what a love between my Savior. Over and over and over 
me five. Oh, I want to see him. Oh, I want to see him. We have a little scene. As I journey through the land, singing as I go, pointing souls to Calvary, you know, to the crimson slope, well, now many arrows pierce my soul, you know, from without, within, but my, my Lord leads me on and through him I must bear, we're singing, oh, I want to see. Well, you know we're 
Brothers and sisters, and all of those who may be within the sound of my voice, I would like to direct your attention to the book of Philippians. The chapter is 3, and the verses are 14 and 15. Philippians chapter 3, verses 14 and 15. And the word of God said, I press toward the mark for the prize of the high calling of God and Christ Jesus. Let us therefore, as many as be perfect, be thus minded. And if anything ye be otherwise minded, God shall reveal even this unto you. I read to your hearing Philippians chapter 3, verses 14 and 15. Let us go to the Father in prayer. Holy, most wonderful and loving Father, we come to you at this time, Father, first of all, as always, thanking you, Father, for the mighty things you have done for us, Father. Mm -hmm. Father, the most important thing you did for each and every one of us that are here with me present, that may, may be online and listening to my voice, is you woke us up this morning, Father. Yeah, yeah. You woke us up and, and you gave us the ability to hear your word and your voice and to worship you this morning. Yeah. So we come to you in thanks for that, Father. And Father, we ask that you would be with those who may be downtrodden, Father, those who may be bereaved, those who may be sick and shed in, and just those, Father, who may just be going through some things and wondering how they will get through. Mm -hmm. Father, we saw the verse, all I want to see him. Yeah. If we keep in mind that we're going to see you one day, Father, that will help, help us to know that we can get through this thing. Yeah. Father, we, we ask you to always be with us at 411 Gaines Avenue. Father, that we may go out and spread love in our community Amen. and help the world to see, Father, the reason that you have us here. Father, we ask that you bless the great leadership here, Father, those men who are striving to do your work, your work, Father, those men that you have put in place to shepherd us and guide us, Father. Let us be of a help to them, Father, as you guide them in your word. And at this time, Father, we ask that you bless the Church of Christ universal, universally, Lord. We know that you have those, your remnant, Father, that are working in your vineyard all across this world. This world. Continue to be with them and guide them, Father. We ask this in all things in your Son, Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Oh, 
we've come to another portion, another part, excuse me, of the worship, which is the communion. I've been reading from Matthew 26, beginning at verse 26, and it reads, and as they were eating, Jesus took bread and blessed it and break it and gave it to the disciples and said, take, eat, this is my body. Let us pray for the bread. God, our Father, we come before you giving thanks for this bread as it is a representation of your son, Jesus' body, that he gave for us on the cross that we might have a right to the tree of life. In your son, Jesus' name we pray, amen. amen. Verse 27, and he took the cup and gave thanks and gave it to them saying, drink ye all of it, for this is my blood of the New Testament, which is shed for many for the remission of sin. But I say unto you, I will not drink forth henceforth of this fruit of the vine until that day when I drink it new with you in my father's kingdom. Let us pray for the cup. God, our Father, again, we come before you giving thanks for this cup, which is a representation of Jesus' shed blood. Father, that, we, that he might have atoned for our sins. Father, we pray that we will take it with clean hands and pure hearts. In your son Jesus' name, amen. amen. We've now come to another part of worship, which is the offering. I'll be reading from 1 Corinthians, the 16th chapter, beginning at verse 1. Now concerning the collection for the saints, as I have given order to the churches of Galatia, even so do ye. Upon the first day of the week, let every one of you lay by him in store, as God has prospered him, that there be no gatherings when I come. Let us pray. Our Father in heaven, we come before you giving thanks for this opportunity, Father, that you've given us to be able to give a portion back to you to which you first gave us. And Father, we're praying that the monies raised today will be used for the purpose in which they were raised to enlarge the borders of your kingdom. Father, we thank you, and this is a prayer that we offer in your son Jesus' name. Let us all say amen. amen. This concludes the offering. I love to praise him, sing, I love to praise him, I love to praise him, I love to praise him. I love to pray. 
singing like you love to praise him. Praise the mighty name of Jesus. We are certainly uh, blessed and fortunate to be here on this first day of the week whereby we are gathered to worship God in spirit and in truth. If you are visiting with us, we are excited that you are here. We're delighted by your presence and Lord's willing, you will give us the opportunity to acknowledge your presence at the appropriate time. If you are a member of the Lord's Church, we are excited to see you as well, whereby we continue together provoking one another unto love and good works. To all who within the sound of my voice, we would like for you to know that here at the Church of Christ that meets at 411 Gaines Avenue in Albany, Georgia, this is the church who trusts and believes in Christ, his teaching, his work, and his example. How's everyone doing this morning? Good, good. If you'll give me a few moments to put forth some of the most pressing and time sensitive announcements before the congregation. We want to ask the church to please continue to pray for Sister Bracy and the loss of her nephew as well. Please pray for my wife, Sister Dominique Godfrey, and the loss of her aunt. Uh, please pray for Sister Dashiel and the loss of her sister. Now, there are some more names that I may be overlooking, but please pray for um, all of those who are standing in need of prayer concerning the loss of a loved one. And uh, just those who are standing in need of prayer generally, we want to pray for Sister uh, Brenda Cutler. We want to pray for uh, Brother Hutley as well. Please pray for uh, Brother Antonio Williams and his wife, Sister Kendra Williams. Also pray for Sister Annette Bush, that's, that's the mother of Sister Kendra. Uh, pr please pray for Sister Munfrey. Uh, Sister Henderson was back with us uh, this morning uh, as well, Collier Henderson. And we also uh, wanna just thank God for uh, Sister Johnson being back with us this morning. Amen, we wanna uh, thank God. She, she, she was down for a little while, but now she's back and uh, she, she's looking good, y'all. So please continue to pray for Sister Johnson. Um, and in terms of our uh, general announcements, today is college, uh, college day. Our college students, all the college students stand up. ASU, ASU, all the colleges we have <laughs> represented. Amen, amen, amen. You all can have a seat. We would like for you all to know that you are special and honored guests. I know there's, there's so many other things that our college students could have been doing. It's getting towards the end of the semester and Professor Jackson is getting his exam together for them. And they could have been home studying, but they thought enough of the Lord to be here with us today. 
I do want to inform the congregation that on April the 18th, 2024, at 7 p.m. here at the building, the eldership has given me permission to host a candidate form for the contested seat for Doherty County District Attorney and the contested seat for Doherty County Superior Court. There it is right there. Uh, that's, that's the information. Um, so if you're interested and you should be interested in this part of your community, who will be the DA and who will be one of the elected Superior Court judges, show up uh, Thursday, this upcoming Thursday at 7 p.m. and see what the candidates have to say. Now, what I will say is that this is not an endorsement by me, not an endorsement by the leadership. Uh, if you want to put it in the most simplistic terms, they're just letting me use the building. Is that all right? Yeah. All right, so, so, and what a wonderful building it is, uh, but, but they're just letting me use the building. This is something that I asked to do and they graciously accept it. Um, also, the, uh, we are in the final stages of the new church directory. Sister Broadnax has put a ton of energy and effort into the church directory in her uh, usual fashion. She's trying to make sure she gets it exactly right. So what that means, she wants all names spelled correctly, all addresses and numbers, phone numbers, everything that will be in the directory, she wants to make sure it's accurate. So uh, there is a draft copy of the directory that will be in the foyer. And we'll probably have to do this a few Sundays, so if you go and the line is too long, we, we'll, we'll come back on another day, uh, another next Sunday, Lord's willing. But just make sure your information is correct. This is your opportunity to make sure all your information is correct. Um, so uh, if you have questions, you can see Sister Broad next about that. And also, our final two announcements, congratulations are in order for our young people. We try to spotlight our young people. Last week, we told you Sister uh, Jasmine Kay was uh, headed to a state competition, and they went up to Kennesaw, Georgia this past weekend and tore it up, y'all. They, 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 they just, Jasmine, Jasmine K, she and her teammates traveled to Kennesaw yesterday and won best and fair at the state competition. They won state, they won state. So, so, so young people, we love state championships in sports. But you know, state state championships in education and academics. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Now we get excited about that because your sports career may end, but you can always use that brain to make money. Is that all right? Parents, now help me with that now because I think I'm right about that. Also, also we have an oppressive young man and young lady and I, uh, you spotlight Elijah Gibson. He was the student of the month. Hey. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Hold. hold your applauses on uh, uh, Elijah because I got a lot to get through here. <laughs> he was three out of 10 kids that was accepted into the gifted program at Live Oak. He was the only third grader and score of a thousand plus on the standardized test and only the third. Stand up Elijah, we need to see you young man. Give him a round of applause. Third grader and also Riley Gibson. Where you at, Riley? Right, she said right here. Stand up. She was student of the month. Give them a round of applause. So hopefully everybody will be excited about young people doing well. I mean, you know, we, we, we just need to encourage our young people, and if, if, if it cuts and it makes us stay a little longer, which I don't think it does, then y'all need to stay a little longer. Because it's better to pray for them while they're doing well than pray for them when they, I'm going to leave that alone. Y'all ready for the study this morning? If the Bible is the word of God, say amen. amen. If you're ready to receive this word, say amen. amen. If you know what a blessing this is in your life, please say amen. 
Good, good. Turn with me to the book of Philippians, the chapters three, and we'll be dealing with verses 14 and 15, primarily 14. Philippians chapter three and verse number 14 and fifth, verses 14 and 15. If you remember last week, we started a series about community development. How do we develop the community that we live in from a spiritual standpoint? And we reached the unavoidable conclusion, hopefully, that the necessity of developing any community is making sure that love is present in the community. And it's love, it's the love that God requires us to have for him, and it's the love that God requires us to have for ourselves and our neighbors as well. Because when we love God with all thy heart, all thy soul, all thy mind, all thy strength, all thy might, all thy being, then that means that we will love thy neighbor as thyself. And when we love our neighbor as thyself, and you have to love yourself as well, but when you love your neighbor as yourself or as thyself, the community that you live in will be a better community. But this morning what I want to talk about is when, you, when we understand this biblical teaching on love, we also need to understand that community development will only work when everyone is going in the right direction. In order to be successful, in order to be an accomplished community, in order to be the community that God would have us to be, everybody needs to be moving in the right direction. Everybody needs to be moving in the same direction. Whenever you have folks moving in one direction and somebody else moving against that direction, then the community is not going to develop like it should. I don't know about you all, but, but, but if you've ever been downtown Albany, they have a couple of one-way streets. And I spend a lot of time downtown Albany, and I can always tell when you have somebody who may not be from the city in downtown Albany. Because right around Washington and Pine, it gets kind of tricky. Or Washington and Broad, it gets kind of tricky. Every once in a while, I'll see somebody when I'm going north on Washington towards downtown, they'll be coming south on Washington on the one way. You know, you know a one-way street, you're only supposed to be moving one way. Okay. But sometimes I see individuals and, and, and it's scary, but thankfully it's low speed. But, but what it does is somebody has to help them go the right way. And many times if you're down by the police station, I have seen police officers and sheriff deputies, if I'm over on Jackson, they'll turn on their lights and let the individual turn around in the road so they can start going the right way. But what ends up happening is when you have to make sure somebody is going the right way because they're going the wrong way, what it does is it hinders everybody who's traveling the right way. Can I paint this picture? Because when you have individuals who are not traveling the way that the sovereign, that the city, that the county said we are supposed to travel, then things don't work the way that they're supposed to work. Well, I'm here to tell you that in spiritual communities all over this world, there are individuals who believe they are traveling the right way. But unfortunately, they are traveling the wrong way. Is that all right? And there are community people who may not even be church oriented, who want to go and travel the right way, but they just don't know the way to travel. But I'm here to help you this morning because there is a word from the Lord. In Philippians chapter 3 and verse number 14, the apostle Paul has painted a picture of his life and actually presented it to the church at Philippi in Philippians chapter 3. What he, what he begins to say very early on in this chapter is that he begins to identify folks and things that keep us, even as Christians, from going the right way. 
See, 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 sometimes you have to identify the problem before you can get to a solution. Sometimes you have to figure out what's going wrong before you can make it right. Sometimes you have to figure out what has been broken down, what has fallen down, in order to build things up, to pick things up, and to turn things around. So the Apostle Paul, he gives several warnings, if you will, about what we should be looking out for as we travel the right way. In Philippians chapter 3 and verse number 2, the Apostle Paul tells us that we need to be aware of evil workers. And evil workers in this particular context are false teachers. If you ever want to get turned around, if you ever want to get turned around from traveling the right way, then get tied up with a false teacher, an evil worker, and, you, and I can guarantee that you'll start going the wrong way. And there's so much false teaching out there today. There's so much false teaching floating around today. People invoke the name of Jesus at the top of a message, and by the time you get to the bottom of the message, Jesus is nowhere in it. Simply mentioning the name Jesus does not mean that it is a message based upon the gospel of Jesus Christ. So, so, so if anybody tells you what Jesus said, take them to the holy record what Jesus would have said it at. Yeah, that makes sense, right? There's something that we have in a court of law that's called a transcript. And sometimes you have a witness on the stand that just won't do right. That just won't act right. That just won't say the right thing that they supposed to say. But if you got a transcript on them, you can say, didn't you testify previously that you said X, Y, and Z? If you're putting something on the name of Jesus, or if you're saying that Jesus did something, then they need to take you to the holy transcript. So, 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 what we see that Jesus says, be aware of false teachers or be aware of evil workers. But verse 3 and 4, Jesus says something that we all can relate to. Jesus, I mean, Paul says that, that, that we cannot trust the flesh. That's Philippians 3 and 4. Now, 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 when we was talking about them false teachers, y'all were all with me. But, 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 but you can't trust your flesh in your decision making. You can't trust the carnal in order to make a spiritual or a right decision. You can't trust them feelings because them feelings come and go. And sometimes the feelings is based upon whether or not it's raining outside. <laughs> Lord have mercy. You let it rain all day. See how much work you get done. In fact, sometimes when it starts raining, we say, Boy, I just don't feel like doing nothing today with all this. But the word of God is not subject to the rain. The word of God is fixed, it's steady, it's never changing. It's what we should be uh, basing our decisions on. And, and the word of God, it feeds our spiritual decision making. So, so, so you have to beware of making decisions based upon the flesh. And you have to beware, and I preached this uh, about a month or so ago, but you have to beware of things being right because you said they are right. Good old self-righteousness, y'all. It's all right to have an opinion, but when your opinion becomes greater than what thus says the Lord, then it becomes a problem. In fact, what Paul says is that all his righteousness, this is uh, Philippians chapter 3 verses 8 and 9 or, or thereabout. Paul says that in all his righteousness, now that he looks, the, the, the righteousness that he made, his self-righteousness, his own righteousness, now that he looked back on it, when he looked back on it rather, he said that it was all done. He said it was trash. He said it was to be thrown away because he was trusting himself in how good he was instead of how good God had been to him. But we see 
Paul, Paul almost gives a warning, but by the time we reach verses, verse 14, or verses 14 and 15, what he unfolds for us is how we all move in the right direction. Community development is moving in the right direction, but Brother Joe, I need you to help me understand how do we all move in the right direction? And, and, and in order for us to all move in the right direction, we must all move as a collective group made up of individuals. Is that all right? Yes. See, see, in order for us to develop this community, we have an individual responsibility as followers of Christ, but we also have a collective responsibility as the church of Christ. We are individually responsible for moving in the right direction. But as believers, as those who are in Christ Jesus, this individual responsibility is manifest as a body of believers when we all come together saying the same thing, doing the same thing, i.e. we're all moving in the right direction. Y'all got that right? So, so, so and Paul, Paul is about to explain this to the church at Philippi, Philippians chapter 3 and verse number 14, what the apostle Paul says is that I press toward the mark for the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. Before, before we start, even begin to really delve into this one passage, uh, a fundamental understanding that we have to have is that everything that we do needs to be in Christ Jesus. In order to move in the right direction, first and foremost, you have to be in Christ. Moving in the right direction, pressing, and what Paul is about to talk about says, is telling me, is telling you from the text that all of this is possible because God has finished his work in Christ Jesus. If you are in Christ, you are well on your way to moving in the right direction. But if you're not in Christ, you need to get in Christ so you can move in the right direction. Because the direction that God wants us to move in, the direction that God is pay, uh, 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 pulling us towards is a direction that is from a divine decree. So, so, so what Paul says, that in Christ, there is the high calling of God. In Christ, there is the prize. And in Christ, there is a mark that we are to press towards, all right? And the reason why I separated it like this, because I need all of us to understand that, 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 that God has done his part. And as we live on this time side of life, we are responsible for doing our part. And we should never get in the habit of thinking that our part is greater than God's part. Just, just because God asks us or says that gives us the privilege to obey, we should not make our obedience greater than the grace that God has showered in our lives. But I don't know about you, but it is a blessing to have a calling on my life. And I'm not talking about as a preacher, I'm talking about as a Christian that has been buried in the watery grave of baptism, rising a new creature, walking in a newness of life. I'm talking about somebody that has been saved according to scripture. There is a calling on your life. Brother Joe, I'm kind of afraid of that word calling. Well, I'm going to help you face your fear this morning. Because the reality is that, that, that we are to press towards the mark for the prize of the high 
calling of God. When you look at this word calling, it's actually a noun. Sometimes when we think of call, we think of an action. And you'll see that in the Old Testament, calling being a verb. But, but this calling is actually something that is instead of something that's necessarily being done in this particular text. Is that all right? So that means when I am in Christ, there is a calling or rather something that is, that is currently existing, that's on my life. Lord have mercy. That means in Christ, when I give my life to Christ, that doesn't mean only that I am saved. But it also means that now that I am saved, I step into a calling that I could not create myself. In this calling, it is a high calling. <laughs> it is a heavenly calling. It is an upward calling. So the calling does not come from man. The calling does not come from a woman. The calling does not come from earth. But the calling comes from God. So when I'm saved, or because I'm saved, I understand that there's a calling that's now on my life. And it is a heavenly calling, a call that comes from God, a call that I could not give myself, a call that I could not make myself, a call that I could not print off a computer, build with my hands, or pray into existence. It is a calling that exists because what happened at Calvary. And when I accepted what happened at Calvary, that calling became my life, and now I live a life that has a calling on it. All right, now let's flesh this out. Let's look at another letter or epistle that Paul wrote to a congregation, Ephesians chapter 1, verse 17 and 18. And when I say letter, now, you, now, when you look at, especially in the New Testament, when you look at books of the Bible in the context of the New Testament, and I'm, 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 I'm just going to explain a little bit here. When you look at the book of Ephesians and Galatians and Philippians and Corinthians, 1st and 2nd Corinthians, those were actually letters, epistles. Sometimes if you have that type of Bible, it'll say epistle to the Philippians at the top sometimes. But that's nothing more than a letter that the Apostle Paul wrote to a particular church. And now this letter has become a part of the Holy Canon. Y'all all right? Okay. So, so when we look at Ephesians chapter 1, verses 17 and 18, that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give unto you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him. Now, this is where I want to be 18. The eyes of your understanding being enlightened that ye may know what is the hope of your calling, my calling. <laughs> His calling. And what the riches of the glory of His inheritance in the saints. Lord have mercy. That, that, that tells me that this calling is not a creation of mine. I just told you that. But this calling comes from on high. And with this calling comes spiritual understanding that Paul explains as the eyes of your understanding. See, see, when I'm living my calling, when I'm living what God has called me to do, when I'm living the life of Christ-likeness that God has called me to live, that means that I don't see things the same way that I used to see things. That I'm no longer taking, taking Joe Godfrey's view of things, but I'm taking God's view of things. And when I take God's view of things, 
that lets me know that I am focused on a higher calling that comes from God. See, 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 once we embrace the calling, and with this calling, there becomes hope as well. If it's one thing the world needs to understand is this thing called hope. Hope is not crossing your fingers and wishing that something happens. Biblical hope is not, 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 not running around and uh, finding a rabbit foot or going to the root doctor. Depends on what part of the, part of the country you're from, root doctor, and trying to figure out. Oh, oh so y'all had never called it roots? Oh, oh y'all ain't here acting new. I had to make sure. But the hope of our calling is eager anticipation based upon what God has said. See, 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 the beauty of being a Christian is that I can anticipate things and I know it's going to happen, not because I'm going to make it happen, but because God has said so. So, so, so when I have hope as a Christian, when I have hope as a Christian based upon what God has said, that is something that I can take to the bank and I know it's true, not because I say it's true, but because God has said it's true. And you have true hope when you understand the calling that God has allowed you to participate in. And really what the Apostle Paul is talking about in this particular uh, passage, Philippians chapter 3 and verse number 14, that, that, that the high calling, that there is a prize, rather, that is of the high calling. Not only do you have hope. Not only do you have spiritual discernment or spiritual eyesight, not, not only do you see it how God sees it, but what the text is now saying, when we take a look at the text, when we are in the calling, when we are living our calling, what God now says is that there is a prize that comes along with the embracing of the calling. That's good news, y'all. That, 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 that this calling that we could not have created on our own, that we have accepted, that there is a prize that comes along with it. And the prize that comes along with it, uh, Philippians chapter 3, verses 10 and 11, that I may know him in the power of his resurrection, in the fellowship of his suffering, being made uh, 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 conformable unto his death, if by any means I might attain unto the resurrection of the dead. What Paul is telling us is that this life right now is not the end of our story. This life that we're living now, you can live for the day, you can live for right now, you can uh, 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 carpe diem, seize the day, you can seize the day, but as long as you seize in the day, make sure that you are embracing and living the calling that's on your life. Because at the end of life, everybody is going to get up. Everybody going to get up. There is a general resurrection, but Paul is talking about how the dead in Christ shall rise. <laughs> That's what Paul is talking about. He's talking about that the penalty of sin, which is death, will never, will never have to worry about it again because we embrace the high calling, the calling from heaven, what God has said we are supposed to be. And not only did we embrace it, but we realized hope. We, 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 and, and, and not only did we realize the hope, but we embraced the prize as well. Growing up, I used to have to spend some time with my grandmother and my great-grandmother. And one of the things about if you ever had to spend time with your grandmother and great-grandmother during school age, that at least in South Georgia, you knew that a given was that you had to watch the 12 o'clock news. 
Yeah, 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 yeah. I just had to watch the news. And, and, and for a long time, I thought, uh, I, I, I just thought you had to watch the news at 12 o'clock. <laughs> but before you got to the news sometimes, the, uh, my great-grandmother would watch a show called The Price is Right. Y'all remember The Price is Right, don't you? And one of the things about The Price is Right, and I consulted with somebody who I know know a whole lot about The Price is Right. <laughs> so one thing about The Price is Right was that uh, they, uh, there would be a saying that they would say on the show. They would say, come on down. You're the next contestant on The Price is Right. And the camera would scan the audience and eventually they'll see the person. And the person would come on down. And then when they would get down uh, to the platform or wherever they were, they would have to guess the price, the, the, the price of a particular item. Y'all with me, right? And when they would guess the price of the particular item, that and 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 if they won, so to speak, that would allow them to advance in this game show. And when they advanced to the game show, they would play another game, and if they won that game, they would get to spin this huge wheel. And if they, and if they got a dollar, or if they were the closest to the dollar, then that means that they could go on to the showcase showdown. Y'all, I used to watch it now. So, 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 there would be a call from uh, out of the audience, a person would have to answer the call. If the person would not answer the call, and I never saw this, then they never had a chance to make it to the showcase showdown. But when they answered the call, they were given a chance to make it to the showcase showdown which was the grand prize of the game show. The only way they could realize the prize was that they had to answer the call when their name was called. The only way they could ever make it to the showcase showdown was that they had to answer the call when their name was called. If they didn't answer the call over there, they could not win the grand prize over here. Come on, y'all. Y'all making me work too hard this morning. Spiritually, if you don't answer the call over here, you don't have a chance at winning the prize over there. But let me show you God's grace. God's grace is not like the price is right. Because if you come up, if you go over on the price is right, then you can't win. If you're too low on the price is right, you can't win. But what God's grace says, what God's grace has done, what God's grace tells me from this text is that he says that the only thing I have to do is keep pressing. <laughs> he says bring up the text he's not telling me that's the wrong text Lord have mercy <laughs> he's not telling me that I have to get it all right now 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 15 talks about perfection and we'll we'll have to deal with that at a later date but 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 this pressing that he's talking about he's telling us that we must be in pursuit. We must pursue the mark or the goal that he has created. And this goal is for the prize which is of the high calling. I don't know about you, but God says, I've given you all of this. All I need you to do is pursue it. All I need you to do is to be in pursuit of it. The only thing I want you to do, because my grace is going to fill in a lot of the things that you got wrong. 
My grace and mercy is going to protect you from some of the things that should have destroyed you. Because there is a calling on your life. Because you live this calling. You are in pursuit of the prize. What I need you to know is keep pressing. I need you to keep pressing. God says, I've done my part. And only thing, and this is really the only verb in verse 14, is to press. <laughs> God says, all that I've done for you is fixed. I just need you to press towards the things that I've already given you. That's good news, church. That's, that's, that's so, 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 so. When I'm, uh, when I'm thinking about giving up, when I'm thinking about turning around, when I'm thinking about giving out, I don't, I don't have to figure out what God wants me to do. God says just keep pressing. Keep pursuing what I've already told you. That's why you have to know some scripture because you have to know what you are pursuing. Watch this now. Now watch, watch this, watch this. In our pursuit, what Paul says is that I press toward the mark. And when we are, uh, and as we press, God blesses us with two things as we press. It's two ways to look at this, or two truths, rather. I like this way better. It's two truths to be learned from this. The press, as we press, it is directional and it is purposeful as well. It gives us the direction in which we ought to press. Y'all got that right? And it gives us the object that we are pursuing as we press. What I mean by direction is Paul says that we need to press towards the mark. Press towards the goal. So we know that the mark the goal, the prize, comes from on high. So when we are pressing, we should be pressing upward and not downward. We should be pressing upward and not outward. Is that all right? Sometimes, sometimes when we look around, even with our spiritual eyesight, we make decisions based upon what's going on around us. Instead of who is in charge above us. Is that all right? I wish I had a church this morning that understood that, 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 that when you look at your circumstances and your circumstances start dictating who Christ is and what Christ can and cannot do in your life, you're treading on thin ice. Because as we press, we're pressing towards an upward call. That's the direction. When I'm trying to figure out what's going on with life, I don't need to check my circumstances to reach my decision. I don't need to check my circumstances as my final decision, but my final decision becomes the word of God that says that I can deal with any circumstance that you may come across. It's all right to know what's going on around you. They tell you to know your surroundings. But when your surroundings start determining, starts becoming the sole factor in your decision making, that becomes problematic. Y'all all right with that? So, so not only is it directional, I'm going upward, but it is a aim. It provides aim as well that we are pursuing and objective. You know, it's, 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 and then hopefully the college students won't get on to me today, but, but it's like when we enter college or when you enter college, when you enroll in college. The thing is, the minute you enroll in college, two things become true. You are headed in a particular direction and you're headed towards a particular objective as well. Brother Joe, help me with that. When I enrolled in Vedasa State University, I was going towards, going in a particular direction. I was going from a freshman to a sophomore, right? From a sophomore 
to a junior, right? And from a junior to a senior, and I finally will end up at graduation. That's the direction I was going. Now, the way that it works, the last time I checked on college, you don't enter college and graduate, and then you start working your way back to being enrolled. Is that all right? Don't work like that. You enroll, and then you progress in a direction towards graduation. Y'all got that, right? But at the same time that I was moving in a particular direction, there was a particular objective that I was trying to achieve as well. And the particular objective that I was trying to achieve is graduation. And unfortunately, there have been individuals who moved in a particular direction towards graduation. But they never achieved the objection, uh, the, the objective, excuse me, of graduation. Y'all see that, right? So what God says, now don't spend all your life moving in a direction towards heaven and miss heaven over some foolishness. <laughs> don't, 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 don't spend this entire life living a life dedicated to Christ and decide that, 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 that you have all this invested in your Christian walk and you wake up one morning and say, I'm just not going to keep pressing anymore. I'm tired of pressing. I'm tired of pursuing the objective. Is that all right? We have to understand that life is going to be about our constant and consistent dedication to pressing towards our goal. And pressing towards our goal is making heaven our home. There may be some people who drive like this, but when you're on the road, let me know. All right, because I'm about to say something. It's my understanding that probably in most uh, states in the United States, that you should be looking forward while you're driving. It seems real simple, right? That you look out the front windshield while you're driving. And it becomes dangerous when you start looking out even your uh, window on the driver's side and trying to drive straight ahead as well. And you show sure enough don't want to ride with anybody who's looking in the rearview mirror while they're trying to drive forward. <laughs> because the reality becomes the way that you are going, that's the way that you should look. In the way that you are looking, that is the way that you should be driving. If you're going ahead and going on up, then you should be looking ahead and you should be looking up. That's what God would have us to do. All right, let me close with this and I'll be out of your way. Colossians chapter uh, 3 verses 1 through 3. If ye then are, this is not conditional, it's, uh, probably, probably a better translation would be since. Ye have been risen with Christ. Y'all see that, right? Seek those things which are above, where Christ sitteth on the right hand of God. Set your affection on things above, not on things on the earth. For ye are dead, and your life is hid with Christ in God. Paul, at the top of this chapter, he says, look, the things that we should be seeking and the things that I sh mine should be set on are those things that are above. The things how we should be viewing life, the hope that we have in this life, should be based upon things that come from above. Things that come from God. So when we seek the, the way that we press, the way that we pursue this heavenly calling 
is that we must seek and set. Seek those things that are above and set our mind on those things that are above. All our desires, all our wants, all the things that we want to accomplish in life, they need to be framed within the framework of does it please God who is above. So when I press, that means I'm pressing knowing that I must please God. And what's most pleasing to God What's most pleasing to God is when we acknowledge and we are willing to acknowledge what he has done for us through his darling son, Jesus Christ. That pleases God. The hardest thing I can imagine that someone would have to do was giving up their child giving up their son or daughter to save someone else. And that's exactly what God did. He gave up his son, sent his only begotten son, so that men and women could be saved. And it'll be a sad day when men and women who had the opportunity to accept Jesus as their Lord and Savior failed to do so and all the full implications of it have come to bear. But praise be to God, you're in the right place this morning at the right time doing exactly what God wants you to do. Hearing the good news about his son Jesus Christ. And if you have not given your life to Christ, if you are not saved, if you have not accepted this calling that is in place that's waiting for you to embrace, then this morning is the morning that you can do it. And you are closer than you think. And because you've already heard the word. Y'all heard me this morning, right? The microphone was working right. Y'all heard what I had to say. There's somebody who needs to believe what God has said from his word concerning your life this morning. Now, belief is something that makes you realize that a change has to take place in my life. That change may have, may have, uh, you, you may have been pushed to a place of change this morning because you have been, you acknowledge that you've been pursuing the wrong things in life. You may have been pressing towards a prize, a mark, a goal, that God does not want you to be in pursuit of. If that's your life and you have not given your life to Christ, say that you want to change that. Say, say God, I've, I've, I've been living a way that's not pleasing to you. I want to live in a way that's pleasing to you. That's called good old fashioned repentance. And then uh, it should be Something that all of us will be willing to do, not not just today, but every day of our lives where you're willing to say, I'm willing to confess, confessing that Jesus Christ is the son of the living God. Being buried in the water of grave of baptism, coming up a new creature, walking in a newness of life. Being baptized for the remission of your sin is where your faith should take you. If you believe that Jesus is who he says that he is, you should be willing to do what Jesus has said you need to do in order to be saved. Mark chapter 16, verses 15 and 16. He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved. He that believeth not shall be damned. Now, once we accept this calling, live this calling, from time to time we won't get things right. We'll sin, we'll fall short, we'll disappoint God, but God is so good, so gracious, and so merciful. He gives us the opportunity to repair this damaged relationship through repentance, confession, and prayer. Now, if you're here with us this morning and you want us to pray with you and for you, we'll do that as well. Now, if you are here and you're a member of any church anywhere in this whole world and you want to learn how to become a member of the church of Christ, we have capable preachers and teachers 
who are here that can help you with that as well, answer your questions, give you biblical answers for biblical questions, give you biblical answers for questions about life that you may have. Now, 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 if we answer your question uh, by first saying this is what the Bible says, that's the only standard that we know to use in addressing the questions of life. Is that all right? Because every question of life leads back to Jesus Christ. Church folks, y'all don't get quiet on me with that. Jesus is the answer. Every day and in every way. We have a song of encouragement. What's that song? Lord, I'm coming home. Brother Garrett will come on up and sing that song. And if there's anybody who needs to respond, you can remain standing or you can get the attention of one of our ushers. Raise your hand, ushers. They're located at the doors all around the building. One of our ushers can help you, can direct you where you need to go. Just look back and raise your hand and they'll come answer or come help you with what you need help with. Please stand while we sing this song. I wonder far away Let us bow, let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day. We thank you for all your wonderful blessings. Thank you for being who you are in spite of what we have done. We pray that we will all embrace this high calling and this prize that comes with the calling and we will press towards the goal that you have set before us. We just pray that you continue to bless this congregation. Bless all our visitors this morning. We are encouraged by the presence of so many visitors and we just pray that that as we attempt to develop this community as believers of and in Christ Jesus that this community will see our love and this community will see that we are all about uh, being headed in the same direction Amen. we pray that we will always have spiritual eyesight as we see this world that we see this world through the lenses of your word and that we reach those who are standing in need of help and who are standing in need of your word. Yes, we love you, we need you, and we cannot live without you. This is our prayer in the name of Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God. Amen. Amen.